doesn't matter what your Instagram shows or how well you did last week. All that matters is what you do today. It's time to put your money where your mouth is. Tournament fishing is competition against yourself just as much as everyone else. One bite can make the difference between winning and losing. The clock is ticking. You better make every cast count. Weather has a huge impact on fish behavior and location, especially in the transitionary periods between spring and summer or summer and fall where the fish are on the move. The anglers that have the opportunity to be on the water more have a greater opportunity to figure out these fish than those that aren't so lucky. Today we are pre-fishing for a local charity tournament Doc Rob Bass Classic is an annual fundraiser for mental health initiatives in the community and this year is looking to be the biggest with nearly 60 boats signed to date. If you'd like to donate, please transfer money to DocRobBassClassic at gmail.com and set the password to donations. The way you prepare for these events will directly correlate with how well you do. The first population we're looking for was one we couldn't keep off our hooks during the pike season. As we approach the area, we notice that the water is cold near the deeper water, and this may be keeping fish inside the bays. Since the wind and waves were blowing like crazy, we decided to check it out. Our goal today is not to catch a huge sack of fish, or even catch a lot of fish. All we're trying to do is figure out where a couple different populations of bass are in their seasonal movements, so that we can, ca uh, we can watch the weather over the next week and make predictions about where they're going to be come tournament day. After fishing the bay, seeing that the temperature was about the same as the deeper water and only catching one fish, we confirmed that the fish have started moving out. One good fish may be a sign to stick around, but populations of smallmouth on Georgian Bay can easily be 50 to 100 per school, so you don't want to stick around if there isn't lots of action or activity. Moving to another area with warmer water and a different population of fish, we stop at a main lake gravel flat and immediately start seeing fish.
way behind. There is no need to fish spots for a long time at this stage of the game. If the fish are around, they will likely bite. Catching a quality fish is a sign of how far the seasonal movements have progressed, and catching small or no fish is a sign the big fish have already moved on. Fish are likely going to move from now until eternity anyways, and so gathering as much information as possible is a lot more valuable than fishing to catch all the fish in a school or on one spot. We quickly fish a few more summer spots and hook into a few big ones good sign that the big bass have arrived or are about to arrive in their early summer haunts. Oh shit. Dude, these are not long, but 
man, we are sick. You want 360 or something? Right there. Fish. Fish. Okay. Yeah. How'd you know? How'd you know? Perfect. An easy way to set yourself up to fail is to only test your theory by going to similar spots. This only prepares you for one type of bite, and then when the weather changes, you're left scratching your head. So we decided to explore a few alternatives and deeper base systems rather than main lake areas to see if there's a bite happening in shallower water or in some deeper weeds, uh, but only come across a few small bass and one decent pike that just doesn't want to bite. At the end of the day, we're feeling confident we've identified the stage where three or four different populations of bass are at. 
This should give us a good starting point for next week's tournament and give some big hints to what other spots we can pull from our logbooks to hit that fit the pattern. Today's total was just over 20 pounds for the biggest five fitch, which is competitive, but likely not going to be enough to win the tournament with all the great anglers in the area.